Back on the Sportsman Zone, the inaugural Canuck Awards is now behind us. Athletes, administrators, and several other stakeholders reveled in the festivities at the weekend. And like she did at the Paris 2024 Games, St. Lucian Julian Alfred stole the show with double success. But amidst the celebrations, there are concerns about the sustainability of the event. Here's Ricardo Chambers, who was in the Turks and Caicos. Beautiful beaches, Turks and Caicos, the backdrop for the inaugural Canop Awards held on Saturday evening. Now, it was to be an outdoor event, but because of expected rain associated with the Hurricane Oscar, it had to be switched to the inside. But still, it was a wonderful evening. And yes, you are right, the St. Lucia, Julian Alfred, was the toast of the night. It was no surprise that the St. Lucia Sprint Sensation was the star of the show, having produced an irresistible season winning the world indoor 60 meter title in march olympic 100 gold and 200 meter silver in paris as well as the diamond trophy over 100 meters to close her campaign although absent the 23 year old received considerable applause as she was announced the winner of the caribbean female sports personality of the year crowned ahead of olympic 400 meter champion marilady paulina of the dominican republic and puerto rico's olympic sprint herders bronze medalist jasmine camacho quinn Alfred was also one of two recipients of the Caribbean Breakthrough Award presented to an athlete who is the first of a country to win a medal at an international or continental multi-sport event. In her absence, her plaques were collected by the St. Lucia Olympic Committee, of which Alfred Emmanuel is the president. First and foremost, it's significant for the athlete who would have captured the, the, the two awards. Um, it came through her dedication and, and hard work. And it's a reflection of all the, all the structures that we would have had in place back home as, as a nation, not only as a, an Olympic committee, but as an as a athletics association, as the government and people of St. Lucia. Olympic triple jump gold medalist Tiela Fond was the other recipient of the Caribbean Breakthrough Award, collected in her absence by former ICC cricket umpire Billy Domstrov, who is the president of the Dominica Olympic Committee. Yeah, it has been very significant because um, Tia has worked very, very hard over the past years and we have seen her progression from the Olympic Games in Rio in 2016 where she, she was just a, a, a qualifier, she didn't reach the finals. The next Olympic Games in Tokyo, she reached the, the finals but didn't um, make it to the podium. And then this, this um, Olympic Games where she which the ultimate and, and won the game. So we can see her progression and we in the Dominica Olympic Committee have given her as much as support as we could have. And um, we are just happy that, you know, that kind of could have um, recognized her achievement. The male Caribbean Sports Personality of the Year award was won by Cuba's Mian Lopez Nunes, who won a remarkable fifth consecutive Greco-Roman wrestling gold medal at the Paris Olympics. The 42-year-old bested Jamaican Olympic discus throw gold medalist Rajay Stoner and Grenada's Olympic decathlon bronze medalist Lyndon Victor. It's, it means uh, it's a big deal for me because it is an award that uh, celebrates all of of the um, achievements he has accomplished throughout his whole career. The Dominican Republic swept the team accolades with their female volleyballers and male footballers winning Caribbean Sports Team of the Year honors. They also won the Caribbean National Olympic Committee Award. There were two Barbadian wins. Stephen Stout received the Caribbean Lifetime Achievement Quadrennial Award, while Anmar Goodrich Boyce won the Caribbean Sports Media Award. One of the biggest cheers on the night was for Galma Williams of hosts Turks and Caicos for winning the Caribbean Sponsor of the Year Award. Canuck President Keith Joseph was pleased with the event's inaugural staging, but admitted to one disappointment. I thought it was very well planned. Um, I thought there were good responses from the National Olympic Committees and they, it was something that looked as though they wanted to be involved in. But I am a little bit disappointed in the sense that the, this first edition in particular, we had athletes who were really outstanding from smaller countries. You know, we are accustomed to seeing the Jamaica and so on on the, on the table. But 
at a time when we had two new countries coming on the medal table in terms of St. Lucia and, and Dominica. It was a little bit disappointing not to have the actual athletes themselves present. And I think people might have been as disappointed as we were in terms of that. But they had commitments and there was nothing that we could do about it. Joseph also raised concerns about the sustainability of an annual award ceremony, suggesting it is likely to be a biennial event, a decision he says will be confirmed by the close of 2024. Yeah, wonderful occasion there. And uh, Ricardo Chambers actually live in studio with us now to recap what happened on Saturday night. Ricardo, great to have you here. I know you're on vacation, but um, you have gone the extra mile to ensure that this um, presentation is as good as it was. And of course, you're working on a feature that will highlight the entire ceremony that will be aired on Sportsmax. Yeah, very much the case. Sometime early next week, Sunday or Monday, we will have a half an hour feature on what happened in the Turks and Caicos Islands because it really was a very good few days. So you had the award ceremony on the Saturday, but outside of that you had the leaders of the various Olympic committees across the region meeting over several days and discussing how their respective organizations will go, for, go forward, learning from each other as well in terms of best practices on so many issues that affect us as a Caribbean region. Unfortunately, one of those issues is financing of the many programs that the leaders want to put in place, including something like the award ceremony, which is why the current president, Keith Joseph, um, is so reluctant um, to say what will happen going forward, whether the award ceremony will continue, um, whether it will be an annual event or a biannual event. Even consideration has been given for it to be a quadrennial event um, okay. happening every four years. Um, and that really just comes down to cost. It really does come down to money, Lance and Mariah. And from what Keith said to me when we spoke on Sunday, they will get the costing from the hosts, Turks and Caicos, this time around. They will get a very good idea of just what it is going to take um, going forward. And then decisions will be made from there. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it would be very disturbing, Ricardo, if this is not an annual event. Because if you're going to reward competitors for being athletes of the year, why would you have down years where you don't have one one? award ceremony the only thing i can think is if you just do an olympic year so every four years if you're thinking finances but good point lance because then some athletes will feel hard done mm. yeah excellent point um i think the consideration at this stage is that if they go every two years then um they will meet with let's say the pan american games or the commonwealth games um, CAC Games, so those continental championships, and then there's the Olympic Games as well in those even years. So I think that is what the thinking is on the part of the organization. I do get the impression, though, Lance and Mariah, that they, they want to have it annually. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, if the finances don't allow them to do that, um, then it could be problematic for them. And I think the last thing they want is to say, well, we're going to do this annually. And then when the time comes, they are unable to fulfill that mandate. So I think they are trying to be extremely careful to yes. not make promises yes. that they will be unable to, to carry through. Yeah, and apart from the financial issue, what are some of the other things that stood out on the night of the event? Because I saw some really nice footage, um, people, you know, really dressed up, being honored for their work. You know, what was that like for you? Well, it was really good. And so let me say, first of all, the Turks and Caicos Islands was on the hurricane watch yes. on Saturday. Um, I don't know if I should admit this, but I didn't know until after that they were on <laughs> no, the hurricane I'm watch. I'm thinking in my mind, right? You went knowing that they were on hurricane watch? No, I mean, you even didn't know. while I was there, yes. even on the yes. Saturday when we were preparing for the ceremony, I yeah. had no idea that the country I, I was, was on hurricane watch. I was aware on Saturday morning, watch. I I was was aware on Saturday morning okay. because I got some information that the venue would be switched to an <gasps> indoor event because of the, the impending bad weather. Well, I knew of the possibility that the venue would be switched indoors, yes. but that was because they were expecting rain. rain. Anyhow, it, was, it okay, had nothing so, to do with a hurricane. So real it, was just, question. it was just rain. Yeah. Real question. Yeah. If you knew about the hurricane, would you have gone? Yes. <laughs> <No>. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. Let, let, 
no, listen, no, but listen, it, it really was a wonderful evening with with all the changes that had to be yes. made last minute because the decision to make it an indoor event was made very early the Saturday morning um, and they were still able to put things in place. And one of the things I said to the organizers is that you could see it throughout the course of the event, how happy people were to yes. be part of the occasion. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was wonderful. You saw, um, I guess, all the who's who of the Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Minister of Sport was there. You had a number of... Uh, um, leading figures yeah. in the sporting fraternity. I saw the Jamaican Aaron Lawrence, who is coaching their yeah. national football yeah. team. He yeah. was there. And I tell you who else was there as well, Lance and Mariah. Delano Williams, remember I that I was name? about to ask you about him, yeah. Y yes. So he actually lives in Turkey. He's back there living now? Y yes. And I tell you, I tell you, I tell you a better story. Yes. He is actually working with the national football setup. Oh as their trainer. So he works alongside Aaron Lawrence, who is now the mm -hmm. head coach. Remember, he went there as the goalkeeping he coach. coach yeah. He is now the head coach. And uh, yeah, Delano Williams is working with the national setup, both the youth programs yes. and the senior program as well. Um, so I guess we should expect very fit Turks and Caicos <laughs> footballers um, <laughs> with Delano at the helm. But it was great to catch up with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he seemed in, in great spirits. And as I said, it was just a wonderful occasion that everybody seemed to be enjoying. And if you were not, you know, reading the news and logging on to Google all day or listening to the radio, like you. You, you would not know that, that they were under a hurricane watch. Yeah. But it was a wonderful evening. Just though. one more for me, because I know you have to go back to being on your vacation, but um, the feature <laughs> that's coming out, Ricardo, um, I'm excited about those. I think um, it's something that I look forward to on the channel. I, I enjoyed doing the Julian Alfred one, and I'm looking forward to see what you come up with now, if you can top that. Um, what are we to look forward to? Like, who are some of the people you interviewed and everything? So essentially, at this stage, it is understanding, because I don't get the impression, first of all, that a lot of people understand cannot the organization, what they are about, what their mandate is. Yes. Um, so a part of the feature will be explaining all of that. Um, and then the other aspect is understanding the awards, um, how they arrive at the nominees, how they arrive at winners. And just to be able to see in greater detail um, than what we saw in that piece just now, um, those who won um, on the night um, and, and get a, a much deeper experience yeah. okay. um, of what happened on Saturday yeah. night and over the course of, yeah. the, of the days. Yeah, and just before you go, Ricardo, because we're wrapping the segment now, I know that Saturday night was a culmination of an entire week of meetings, not just with Well, not Cano even the culmination. The culmination really was on Sunday. Sunday, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay, but there were meetings with um, Panam Sport. Yes. There were officials from Caribe Sport. Yes. So there was a sort of a coming together of a lot of regional or hemispheric, I should say, Pan American sports and so on, um, bodies coming together. Was there anything significant that came out of those meetings that you can talk about? <laughs> so, <laughs> very good question, Lance. Very good question. And um, I think generally, and the idea of the week of activities was an opportunity for all these leaders to get together yes. um, and to as much as possible share best practices and to see how they can learn from each other. Um, and I think you saw a lot of that going on both formally and informally. Um, and that was something that stood out to me. Um, but outside of that as well, just talking about the issues that impact yeah. um, the Caribbean and, as I said, how best they can deal with a lot of those um, going forward. And, yes, the, the, the issue of financial constraint is a major, major one issue, yeah. in the region and I think one that is... Um, preventing a lot of these leaders from carrying out mm. um, a lot of the things that they, they really want to. Because one of the things I would say that from listening to a lot of the discussions 
is that there is some amount of foresight. You have leaders mm. um, who want to move sport forward in the region, yes. but do they have the finances mm -hmm. um, to do so? That's, yeah. okay. it, that is really the big question yeah, at I, this stage. I, I understand that. The Commonwealth Games Federation was also a part yeah. of this, and, these meetings and as well. And also, there was, there was an interesting um, presentation on the final day Sunday from sailing um, for the sport to be included in the Caribbean Games um, mm -hmm. as sort of a development tool to get to the Olympic, Olympic Games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the thinking being, listen, we live in the Caribbean. We are surrounded <laughs> by, by, water. Water. by water. We should have good sailors. <laughs> we should have good <laughs> representation in all water sports. <laughs> and sailing was the latest to, yeah. to make you know, right. their presentation to say, hey, let us in the Caribbean yeah. Games. Let us start here and build okay. from okay. there. All right. all right, thanks, Ricardo. Great having you on the show, if only temporarily. <laughs> and we are looking forward to the package that comes out of the Canuck Awards uh, to be aired. And I'll be back in November where I'll be sitting in another seat. Yeah, I, I, I know it looks, <laughs> this a little, is my seat. it looks a little weird you being I called in, the, it. In, in the middle there. <laughs> but um, we'll keep the viewers posted for sure as to exactly when the um, highlights package will be aired of the Canuck Awards. Congrats to all the winners again. And we'll be back with more on the Sports My Zone after this.